Hi there and welcome to this new video. Now in this video I want to start a series on developing a kernel from scratch. Now this series was inspired by the following book which I suggest you that if you're interested in kernel development you should definitely give it a read because it is a great book and I thank the author for having written it in English and published it on the internet. The book is called Operating System in 1000 Lines, so we will take inspiration from this book, but we will also do things on our own to just explore of the various ideas. And in this first episode, what I want to talk about is the introductory right to this, to this project. And as a first capability that we should learn in order to write a kernel is how we can write and execute a RISC-V program. So when you write a kernel, now the kernel abstracts over the hardware of your, uh, of the various uh, possible implementation. Now, when you write a kernel from scratch, you have a bunch of decisions to make. For example, a decision could be in what kind of language do you want to write your, your kernel? In this video, in this series, we will use the C programming language, but you can use Rust, you can use Zig, you can use your favorite language, basically. Another choice that you have to make is what kind of hardware do you want to target? What kind of hardware do you want to support? Because remember, the kernel is the abstraction layer over the hardware, right? When we write a program, we write a program in user space, and this program uses system calls and other uh, facilities that are offered by the kernel, right? And the kernel then executes over, at the end we find the hardware. So basically everything after, everything below this is abstracted by the kernel and the user space simply calls like, you know, write, read, open, close, stuff like that. And the kernel takes care of everything else. So in this project, taking inspiration from the book that I just mentioned, we will target the RISC-V architecture. Now RISC-V is based on a reduced instruction set architecture. It means that it is a simple, a simple processor, right? If you compare it with x86 and x86-64, of course, these are much more complex than risk five so this is a good educational project to understand how operating system work how, how they work out right and how we can implement a kernel and what the kernel does basically so the first step is okay let's write a simple risk five program now here i link to the specification of the risk five platform personally i'm not an expert over this so you will see the explanation of someone try trying to learn it for himself, right? So if there's something wrong, please correct me in the comments. I would really appreciate that. Now, the first thing we'll do is we write this simple RISC-V program that will print out an hello string and then terminate. So that's it, pretty simple. And here, basically, we have this program itself. As you can see, we are defining the section text, which will contain the instruction of our program, we, um, we have this uh, label start uh, and we put this label, this label into global so that it is viewable by the linker to create uh, the final executable. And here basically what we do is we print out a single character at a time. So here we print out uh, the H character and we do it uh, and this is like, um, this is going to be executed in kernel mode. And to print out stuff to the screen, we will use a function taken from the SBI layer. And we will talk about the SBI in a little bit, so don't worry about that. But basically, the way it works is we put the 72, which is the ASCII code for H, into the register A0. We put 1 into the register A7, and then we execute an instruction equal, and it's going to trigger the SBI call. Now, the ID1 for the SBI call means the SBI console put char. So it is the function responsible for writing something on the console, for inserting a character into the console. And as you can see, we repeat this for all the other characters in a law, basically. And then this is a new line. So this is an E, this is an L, because I write very bad, and then this is a new line, right? And then at the end, we just call shutdown, 
we put the x code at zero, the id we shut down which is 93, we also do a call and then we go into an infinite loop after printing. So basically that's a very simple program. Now the next step of course is we need to compile it and to compile it we need to uh, download the risk 5 to chain because we must do cross compilation given that right now i'm executing into an x86 64 machine this is my laptop the frame framework laptop it's um x86 64 and i need to compile it for a risk 5 so i need a cross compiler and here i've put the command in wget to download it here i've already downloaded the tool chain xpack risk 5 none elf gcc with the version so we can assemble the program with this command so we're going to call the risk 5 non elf as we put the assembly print.s the file that contains the assembly instruction and as output we will find we will get an object file so print.o print.o is an object file and it is an object file for this particular architecture now to actually get a final binary there is the linking step that we must do now in one of my previous video i talk about the compilation process in c in which we start from the c source code then we obtain the object file and then we link the object file together with a linker to have the final elf binary right where it's very similar in this case it's just that now we have to specify we have to use a custom linker script to specify the entry point for our text files and the different sections that we have. Now in this case, this is a linter, linker script. Here we are saying start from this particular address, and this is important. Then we put into the text, text section first the entry point and then all other text sections. And finally, we have the read only data the read write data and the initialize data and this we will use it later on later on we will take this link script we will make it more complex and this is going to be what creates the final elf binary so the way we use it is we save this file into a file called linker.ld and then we link the program with the tool chain risk5 non elf ld right with the command dash t with the linker script the object file and then dash o the output file which is going to be the final elf executable so we do that so let's say here what we have we do that and here we find the print dot elf i mean we can even delete it right we can even delete it also let's just delete also the object file so all the compilation is made up of two steps first we have to obtain the object file and then we have to link it in order to obtain the final elf binary. At this point, we have this print.elf, right? This thing. However, notice that, of course, we cannot execute this. Why? Because, as I said, I'm executing on an x86 64 machine, so it's 64 bit. And this is not a risk 5, so I cannot execute directly risk 5. And how will we solve this problem? Of course, we will virtualize with Camo. And the chemo command to virtualize is pretty simple. We will use chemo system risk32. We will use the vert virtual machine, the default BIOS, no graphic because we don't want um, graphical output, we just want serial. And in the kernel option, we will put the binary that we need to execute. Now, if we execute this, look at this, we get a bunch of output here. We get this thing called OpenSBI. And then at the end, we get our hello. And then the program hangs because it goes into the infinite loop, right? Now, to get out of this, we can press Ctrl A, C, and then here I have the camo monitor, and here I can press quit. And it's going to quit the virtualization aspect. Now, this OpenSBI output that we saw is related to the role of OpenSBI. And I want to talk about this because it's important for later stages to understand what is going on in here. Now, what is OpenSBI? Now, at this point, we have our RISC-V program, we compile it, but before actually executing our program, it printed stuff related to OpenSBI. Now, OpenSBI is a reference implementation of SBI, which stands for Supervisor Binary Interface. And what is this supervisor binary interface? 
Well, it is the firmware layer used in the RISC-V ecosystem to provide runtime services required during boot and in general for the kernel, required by the kernel. Now, consider this abstraction stack. This is what we're going to work with. So we have the typical user application, which will run in user mode. Then we have the OS kernel, which will run in supervisor mode, S mode. And then we have OpenSBI, which runs in machine mode, M mode, which is the most privileged mode, right? So basically, the idea is that exactly like the kernel abstracts away for the user application, in the same way, OpenSBI abstract, abstracts away for the OS kernel. So the OpenSBI provides a standardized interface between the supervisor mode where the kernel will run and the machine, um, machine mode firmware and hardware layers, which are platform dependent. So this means that OpenSBI provides services to the kernel and it hides hardware platform details across all RISC-V systems, making it easier to run the same OS kernel on different RISC-V hardware. So basically, instead of dealing with the specificity, like with the specific details of the RISC-V platform you are working with, you have an abstracted SBI service, which abstracts all firmware and hardware details. You just have this SBI console pushar instead of having to deal with that specific console with those specific hardware details. And basically what we can summarize this by saying that the open SBI is to the kernel what the kernel is to user applications. So anytime we have these abstraction layers, they are useful because they mean, it means that here we are creating something that we can theoretically replace what's beneath the abstraction layer as long as we provide the same interface, right? So that's the idea. And this already happens with uh, in this setup, right? We have user space, we have kernel space. Now in risk five, we also have this open SBI, which is the same thing, but it is between the kernel and the hardware. So the kernel does, does not see directly the hardware, rather it interacts with the open SBI layer, which provides all the services required by the kernel. So basically that's the idea. And I've already showed how to run this camu command, camu system risk 532 So by doing this, we are like, we pretty much can execute our program. So this law would execute in kernel mode, right? In supervisor mode. Now in the next episode of the series, what we will see is we will see how to not just print a law and that's it, but to have an actual program, an actual kernel with all the kernel abstractions and we will just replace this with, with an actual C program. We will compile the C program into an else binary using the linker like we, like we showed in this case. It's going to be a bit more complex, but basically that's the idea. And with Camo here, we can just put the BIOS default. This BIOS default takes the default implementation of OpenSPI, right? This particular implementation. And then we put the kernel and here is going to be our kernel binary. And with this, we can write our kernel from scratch. So this was the first video of the series. Let me know if you want to see if you want to see the continuation of the series where we'll get into more complex ideas. If you have any feedback, please leave it in the comments. Now, if you want to support my work here on YouTube, you can subscribe to my Patreon link in the description. And I also have courses on Udemy. These are security related courses. I teach web application security and Linux privilege escalation security. So if you're interested in one of those, check out the courses and let me know what you think. Having said that, thank you very much and to the next video.